And before I go any further, we just want to say special thank you to any and every one that whether you watch this on watch this at dedicated television or whether you watch this on, on our simulcast on YouTube. Wow. You know, the, the feedback has been incredible. And you know, we are so happy, we're so blessed, we're so thankful. For the opportunity that not only do we get to you know grow the resonate family but guess what we're so happy that you're included in the family and not just inside the resonate family but inside of god and we thank you so much for your support no matter where you are throughout north america hey you're in canada hey if you're in mexico thank you if you are wherever you are around the world, even in the UK, hey, thank you. No matter where you are watching this, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for resonating. Tonight is pretty, pretty cool. You know, back in January of this year, uh, we kicked off the new year two back to back weeks with one Danny Hall. And we had something called the greatest name on earth. Oh, woo! What a person, hey program! Those two really were. And our remaster, Danny Hall, oh, wow, he broke down some words, didn't he? Well, he said he wanted to come back. Tonight, especially for you. And, you know, we go through things every day. You know, we go through thousands every day. Of course, you know, Joyce Meyer uh, wrote an incredible book called The Battlefield of the Mind. Hmm, incredible. And trust me, when you read it, it's addictive. Yeah. Just give you a fair warning, it's addictive. But so addictive, it, you can barely even put it down. That's powerful it is. You know, Why not include God in your mouth? In fact, here's one for you. You know, in the middle of everything you're going through, God's already taken care of it. Spoiler alert, God's already taken care of it. Here's the key to all of that. Trust me. So, tonight, if he's not in Rainmaster form, um, but, he decides he wants to stop by and give you some encouraging words. Courtesy of tonight's special guest, Danny Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember that God is in the midst of your battle. Danny Hall, it's all yours. Thank you for coming. It's all yours, my friend. That's going to resonate. Today, I believe God's got a word for us today. Amen. How many of you, how many of you believe with me that we never come to the father's table that he doesn't, that he doesn't set something else for us to eat. Amen. I, I, I've never come to the father's table where he just kind of, you know, put me out a Nutri-Grain bar 
and, uh, you know, maybe uh, 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 a little bit of, of, of water and said, well, you know, that's, that's all I got, you know, amen. But every time I come to his table, Pastor, it's a buffet. It's all I can eat, amen. Now, whether I choose to eat or not, that's up to me. Come on, somebody. I said, whether or not I, I choose to fill up my, ta- my, my plate and, and, and everything is up to me. Now, when I used to go to my daddy's house when I was growing up and after Gigi and I got married, we would go home. And our boys do this to us even today when they come to our house. After, after Gigi's done piled all the food on the table, after Gigi's done cooked, after it's all done, and we're all sitting around, you know, going, whoa, that was good. My boys will get up and start looking for the Cool Whip bowls. Uh, Because they're getting ready to take some home with them. Amen. Because they know mama done fixed enough that they can take it home. Baby, I want you to know this morning that your heavenly father has more than enough to meet your need. And it's not just here in this place, but he intends for you to leave here. Amen. And carry it with you. Hallelujah. Amen. So that you will have more than enough to meet your needs. You need to give the Lord a hand clap on that. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we are just excited about what God is going to do today. Listen, I believe that we're living in some exciting times. Uh, I believe that you are going through an exciting transition. And so things are, so while, while things are very, are very tough and things are a little bit difficult, you're looking back from where you've been and you're trying to figure out where you're going and you're trying to learn your place and trying to learn the building and trying to learn all these things. And there's still some stuff that has to fall into place and, and everything like that. There's still that excitement of knowing that where we are is not where we've been and where we're going ain't where we're at amen hallelujah amen and so we are living in some exciting times but also along the way I believe that Satan is doing all he can to discourage God's people amen come on somebody amen surely I'm not the only one that had to that's had to fight him amen Listen, listen, the Satan knows that if he ever allows us to get up and really get to moving, amen, we're going to tear up what he's built up for so long, amen, amen. Uh, look, look around you this morning, it seems like everybody's fighting something, amen. Some of them are just fighting to survive, some of them are just fighting to make it, some of them are just fighting to fight, uh, they ain't got no reason to fight. They just fighting because they're fighters. But I also believe that in the midst of that, God is going to send a time of revival. And He is sending a time of renewal to His people. Amen. Right in the midst of your greatest battle, God will send your greatest victories. How many believes that? Amen. I'm reminded of a passage of Scripture. It ain't in the notes, so y'all don't go looking for it. In Psalms 23, where the psalmist David wrote, and he said, Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Right when I'm fighting the hardest. Right when the battle is the strongest. Right when I'm standing toe-to-toe with the enemy. God comes in and says, You go to your corner, and you go to yours, and give me just a minute, because I'm setting up a table amen Uh, and you say well what are we doing and God said we celebrating he says well you say what are we celebrating I still got a bloody nose uh, and my eyes still swelling shut uh, and I'm still in the ring uh, and God says we're celebrating because you're still in the ring amen Uh, we're celebrating because I'm here and the battle's over you may still be fighting but the battle is over Right in the presence, amen. Right in the presence. This morning, I want you to know God wants to do something great for His people, amen. And I want to be a part of it. How about you? Glory to God. This morning, I I want to deal with something this morning. And please, I, I, I hope this morning you love me enough. I hope that you love me enough this morning. Uh, that you'll allow me to deal with this this morning in, in, in the way that God laid it on my spirit because I'm concerned, I'm a little bit concerned this morning that I'm going to touch something that's a little painful for somebody. Please understand, that's, um, that's not my intention. But I just want to lay this out the way that God laid it out in my heart and my spirit to speak to you 
uh, to speak to you this morning and just share it with you because I believe that Resonate Church, is that how we say it, Resonate? Okay, it's not Resonant. Okay, I keep putting an N on it. I keep putting an N in it. You know, like some folks put an R in washing machine. Uh, y'all know what I'm talking about? How many of y'all have a washing machine? Uh, I want you to know right now there ain't no such a thing as a washing machine. It's a washing machine. Amen. How many of y'all, how many of y'all put an S on the end of Walmart? Uh, Walmarts. I'm going to Walmarts. That's, y'all going to more than one Walmart or y'all just going to one Walmart? Because if you're going to one Walmart, it's just Walmart. Now, if you're going to go to the one on this end of town and the one on that end of town and the one on that end of town, you're going to Walmarts. Hello? <laughs> Come on now. Amen. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm just saying, all right? I, I'm just saying. But I hope today you'll help let me allow, allow me to kind of share my heart with you and, and, and just share with you the way that God laid it out in my spirit. Will that be okay? And, 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 if I, and if I step on a painful, on a bruised area of your life, please understand it's not my intention. I'm just trying to share with you what God has shared, what God has shared with me. Amen. I, I, I want to I talk to you this morning. I, I want to talk to you for a little bit. This morning, and deal with those who have found themselves in the midst of the battle. I want to talk to someone this morning who is on the verge of giving up. You're right there on the very edge. You're saved. And you're going to heaven. Yesterday as I was in the altar and I was praying, God kept rolling it into my spirit. God kept rolling it into my spirit about go, being on your way to heaven, but, but, but living in hell. Hello? Uh, oftentimes we run into Christians, we run into good God-fearing people who are on their way to heaven, who are saved, on their way to glory. But while they're living, they're living through hell. And I don't believe that's God's will. Amen. I said, I don't believe that's God's will. Come on. You're saved and you're going to heaven, but it just seems like something is missing. There has to be more than this. This morning I t- I've come to tell you to not give up. Amen. Don't you give up. Amen. Uh, Because there is a life-giving power headed your way. Amen. I said there is life-giving power headed your way. Turn with me to the book of Luke chapter number 1. Luke chapter number 1. And while you're going there, let me uh, kind of share with you and bring you up to date. In Luke chapter number 1, we find a man by the name of Zacharias. Zacharias was married to a lady by the name of Elizabeth. Zechariah and Elizabeth lived together for many years. And, and, and the Bible says that Zechariah was a priest. He was a, he was a man of God. And, 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 and in those days, the priests would go to the temple and they would live in the temple. They would work in the temple and they stayed there 24 hours a day for several months at a time. Several weeks at a time. And then when their time was up, they would go back home to their families and they would live with their families for a while until the Bible calls it, the King James Bible calls it their course came back up and then they would go through their course again and back and forth and so their life was always in that direction and Zacharias was going through his course he was going through his time of ministry Elizabeth was back at the house, uh, Zacharias was at the church, Zacharias was in the temple. And the Bible says that the Lord came upon Zacharias and began to talk to him about having a son. And Zacharias laughed at God and said, there ain't no way. I'm an old man, she's an old woman, it ain't going to happen. And he said, "He said not only is it going to happen, but you're going to name him John. And Zacharias said, you're going to have to run that past Elizabeth because ain't nobody in our family ever been named John. That name just ain't ever come up. And, and God said, well, you're going to name him John. And Zechariah said, no, I don't believe we are. And God said, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to make you unable to speak until the day you name that child John. Zechariah said, oh, 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 oh. he couldn't speak. Huh? But he went home. He went home. He spent some time with Elizabeth, and the Bible says in verse 23, And it came to pass, as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Now listen to me, Elizabeth was a godly woman. Elizabeth was a godly woman married to a godly man. Zacharias was a priest, but Elizabeth lived with a stain on her soul. 
Elizabeth lived with a bruise on her reputation. Elizabeth lived with a cloud of depression, with a cloud of despair on her all the time. And that cloud was there because Elizabeth had never born a child. Elizabeth had never been able to, to bring forth a child and to, and, and to bear a child. And so she, she, she lived with that all the days of her life. Amen. This is the reason why that the Bible says that she hid herself. Remember? Remember back in, in Luke 1 and 24, the Bible says after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and she hid herself for five months, Pastor. For five months, Elizabeth hid herself because she had never born a child, because she had never been able to give a child. She had been through this before and it always ended badly. This morning I've come to speak life to somebody. This morning I've come to let you know that your, that your failures of the past do not necessarily dictate your failures in the future. Amen. Just because that you've stumbled before does not mean you have to stumble again. Just because you've went down one time does not mean you cannot rise up. Amen. Just because that you have disappointed. Just because that you have discouraged. Just because you've made bad choices in the past does not mean that you are that you are propelled to continue to make bad choices in your future but God allows you turns for a reason God allows us to turn around God allows us to turn and God allows us to change as a matter of fact the Bible declares to us that when we come to God all things are made new old things pass away we're not who we used to be we don't have to go where we used to go we don't have to deal with the sins we dealt with we don't have to be bound to the habits that we were bound to uh, we move on as new creatures in Jesus Christ amen listen listen I got to I'm, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself this morning listen she hid herself because she had been through this before and it always ended badly listen it was not that Elizabeth could not conceive the problem was she couldn't bear fruit. Hello? Sister Hovis, do you hear what I'm saying? It wasn't that, it wasn't that, it wasn't that she couldn't conceive. It was that she could not bear fruit. It wasn't that she couldn't be intimate. It wasn't that she couldn't, she couldn't be with child. It's just that she could not bear a child. Oh, help me, Jesus. Huh? Remember the Bible says that she was not a young woman. Luke chapter 1 and verse 7 says, And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. And they now both were stricken in years. This morning I want to present to you that Elizabeth may have, have conceived many times. But before she could deliver, something happened that caused her to lose the child. Something on the inside of her, something internal, something external, would cause her to abort her destiny. Hello? Would cause her to lose her destiny. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Not physically, maybe, but spiritually. There may be some in here that even physically know. But you know about this spiritually, even if you haven't, haven't gone through it. You know what I'm talking about. You, 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 you get blessed in a service and God speaks a promise over you. And you hold on to that promise. But over time and after a while, the promise just seems to die. Come on, come on, you, you, you get moved on by the Holy Spirit and, and God begins to do something in your life and you leave out of here wagging your finger at the devil saying, it's mine, it's mine, every promise in the book is mine. Uh, but you get out there in the real world, uh, come on, and the drug dealer comes back. Uh, come on, and that old friend that you've always smoked dope with shows up again. Uh, come on, somebody, amen. Uh, you get depressed again and you get discouraged again. And before you know it the thing that God had put in you uh, no longer is there and you're wondering God uh, was it real to even start with uh, why in the world do I have to go through this again amen some of you know that when I'm talking about you're in revival and God plants something in your heart and you have every intention of following it through 
I'm going to get with Pastor Brian and I'm going to talk to him about that because I think God spoke a ministry into my heart. I think God's been dealing with me about starting something, about stepping up, about being a part. And I'm going to get with Pastor Brian and talk to him about that. But over time, it just seems like that it just kind of, you know, goes away. It's been keeping you up at night. It's been, it's been, it's been waking you up in the early da- da- a daylight time. It's been something that's been heavy on your mind. Amen. You've been walking around saying, man, uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, but I'm telling you, I'm not feeling like I felt uh, last week. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, come on. Uh, come on. I can't sleep. Uh, and I can't eat. Uh, and I can't, go, I can't fit in my clothes. Uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, but I think God's put something inside of me. Uh, but over time, uh, it just kind of goes away. This morning, I want to tell you that God's plan is eternal. It is not dependent upon your emotions. It's not dependent upon your feelings. And maybe it's not dependent upon your status. Only thing that it's dependent upon is thus saith the word of God. Amen. You've been praying for a lost loved one, a husband or a child, and it just seems like the more you pray, the worse they get. Come on, somebody. Marital problems hit and your kids go squirrely. And in order to survive, you, in order to survive yourself, you let go of your calling. Come on. In order just to survive yourself, you let go of your calling and you let go of your destiny. And you let go of the promise that God gave you. Because it's just easier to give in and to stay home. It's just easier to go back to that habit and pick it up. It's just easier to go back uh, to what God brought you out of. Uh, Come on. Than it is to stand and fight. Uh, Amen. Come on somebody. And finally you just give up. uh, Because it's easier. But the scars are still there. The pain is there. The thoughts and the hopes never go away. And the regrets... About what could have been. I'm not going to church. I'm not going to church. I know, I know residents have in church. But I'm not going there. Because I'll go down there. Pastor Brian and get to preaching. And McKenna will get to leading songs. They'll get to singing them songs that I remember. And something will remind me of the pain. Come on. Come on somebody. Something will remind me of the pain. Look at the next verse, verse 26. Remember, remember, remember in verse 25, the Bible says, The Lord dealt with me in the days wherein... As soon as the days of his ministration were over, verse 24, then Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, The Lord hath dealt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me to take away the reproach among men. And then verse number six says this, And in the sixth month, The angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Huh? To a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph. Of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. Now here's what I want to draw your attention to. I want you to draw, I want to draw your attention to three letters. A. N. D. Hello? Verse 25 ends telling us that, that Elizabeth had conceived. That Elizabeth hid herself for five months. That Elizabeth was was, was hid away in the house. She wouldn't go to the market. She wouldn't go to Walmart. Uh, Come on. Uh, She she, she, she told Zacharias, uh, I can't run that washing machine no more because i got to stay away from bleach uh, and stuff like that because I think i got a baby. Come on. She said, I'm staying away from everything that could cause me to lose this child. I'm going to make sure this time that I carry it all the way. Come on, somebody amen and then verse number and then verse number 26 says and and listen and is a conjunction huh i said and is a conjunction that ties the two thoughts together Hello? The fact that Elizabeth was now six months pregnant and the fact that the angel was sent to get to to Mary uh, are two thoughts that are tied together. They are dependent clauses. Huh? So while Elizabeth was hiding in fear, God was sending Gabriel to Mary with some good news. 
<laughs> the two events are tied together. They cannot be separated because of the word and. Listen, God had not forgotten Elizabeth. He was just getting her miracle set up on the other end. Oh, somebody missed it right there. I said, God had not forgotten Elizabeth. He was simply getting her miracle prepared on the other end. Amen. Uh, come on. Come on. I, I want to tell somebody this this morning. That if God had given to you what you asked for Him, when you asked for it, you wouldn't have been able to handle it. But He had to go to the... I said he had to go to the other end and he had to get some stuff fixed and he had to get some stuff prepared so that when you showed up the infrastructure was already set in place so that you could enjoy what he was getting ready to give you instead of just tossing it away and not being able to handle it. If, if, God, had, if God had given resident this building and this land... Ten years ago, you wouldn't have been able to handle it. Hello? Come on. If God had given to pastor what he birthed in his heart ten years ago, what he, what he birthed in his heart three years ago, I sat with him, what was it, three years ago? Something like that, when we first, first kind of met. And, and he told me, man, he was depressed. I was, I was fixing to go take him and check him in for a 24-hour watch. Huh? I mean, he was just telling me, man, this building is too small. I don't know what we're going to do. We ain't got no parking. We ain't got no money. You know, we ain't got nothing. If God had given him three years ago this, three years ago, you wouldn't have been able to handle it. Amen? Uh, but three years ago, God was working on this. Uh, three years ago, he was talking to a man that had a building and five acres that he was storing cars in. And God began to work on his heart so that when you got to this place he'd be ready to give it to you and you could move in come on somebody amen see God's delays do not mean God's denials amen just because it didn't happen the first time you prayed don't mean it ain't gonna happen baby hold on God's working a miracle amen I said God's working a miracle don't you give up on your miracle. Don't you listen to the lies of the devil. Look at verse 36. Is this all right? Better be because it's all I got. <laughs> Unless y'all want me to start over on something else. I mean, I'm already 20 minutes in. I can start over, but y'all had to give me my 20 minutes back. <laughs> Pam says, just carry on, brother. Just carry on. Luke chapter 1 verse 36 says, And behold, the, thy cousin Elizabeth. Gabriel speaking to Mary says, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth. The, 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 the angel speaks to Mary and says, Hey, look, you finna have a baby. Uh huh? And he says, Not only are you gonna have a baby, but listen to me, your, your cousin Elizabeth, verse 36, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. Woo, everybody else said she couldn't have it. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. We often preach that the angel said to Mary about the baby she was going to have that with God nothing is impossible. Huh? But the angel wasn't speaking to Mary. He was talking about Elizabeth. Look what it says. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Amen. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now this is very important. Listen to me. This is very important. Most miscarriages take place. In the first three months. What's known as the first trimester. That's where most miscarriages take place. Elizabeth was now in the sixth month. The second trimester. Three months from delivering. Listen. But she was still 
hiding. She was past the point of throwing up. She was beyond the point of not showing. Her body was changing. Things were going on. Hormones were raging. Huh? Every night she was waking Zacharias up and saying, I got to pee, I got to pee, I got to pee. <laughs> help me, help me, help me. Every day she's standing in front of the mirror going, I'm a cow. Look at me. Huh? And Zacharias would say, no, baby, no, baby, you ain't a cow. You might be a heifer, but you're not a cow. <laughs> She sent Zacharias down to Sonic to get a dill pickle slushy and a chili cheese coney huh? mm -hmm. and some onion rings with some maple syrup. Because <laughs> uh -huh. she just couldn't understand why do I want onion rings with maple syrup? That's nasty. Huh? Mm. She's eating peach cobbler and putting Tabasco sauce on it. It was like, oh, it's nasty, but I love it. She's past the point. She's in the sixth month. Elizabeth was six months pregnant and still hiding herself. If she was past the danger zone, why would she still be hiding? And here's what I think. Listen, you can throw this out if you want to, but this is what I think. I believe it. It lines up with the word. I, I, I believe that Elizabeth thought something might be wrong. Hello? Perhaps it had been some time since she had felt the baby move. We, 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 we recently had a, 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 a family member miscarry. She thought she was 12 weeks. She went to the doctor found out she was 8. And there was no heartbeat. For four weeks, she carried that inside of her, hoping it would move. Praying it would move. Believing it would move. Imagine Elizabeth hid herself for three months. Maybe her baby hadn't moved. I, I wonder how many of you are sitting here this morning and that unction that you once felt from God is no longer kicking. Hello? That excitement that you once had. That excitement that you once had when you didn't have it. That excitement that you once had. It's no longer exciting. It's just work now. It's just something I do. I don't do it because I feel an unction. I just do it because I'm just getting through. I'm just trying to get through. I'm just trying to face tomorrow. I'm just hoping to survive. Amen. Come on. That call from God you once felt is now dormant in your life. And there is an empty void where it used to be vitality in life. Now, I don't want to pray. I don't want to read my Bible. I don't want to listen to Caleb. Air One. Bill Gaither. Hillsong or Hillsong United. I don't understand if they're both Hillsong, why is one of them united and the other's not? Just a question. I don't want to be reminded of how exciting my Christian experience used to be. Can I tell you this morning, don't you give up yet. I said, don't you give up yet. Amen. Amen. 
Read the next verse, verse 39. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste. <laughs> Can I tell you something? When God comes to your rescue, he doesn't come on the slow train. Amen. Amen. The Pointer Sisters may have wanted a man with a slow hand. Amen. But I want you to know your heavenly father is in a hurry. Amen. And he's coming with haste. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Help us, Jesus. Let me get sanctified. Uh, and he went into, and she went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judea and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. Woo! Watch this. Watch this. Mary walked up on the porch. Huh? Elizabeth and Zacharias had a screen door. They didn't have no storm door, you know, with the one with the glass and all that. They didn't have no ring thing where you push the button and your picture pops up on their phone just in case she was down at Walmart's. Huh? She could go, who is it? Just leave it on the porch. No, 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 no. They had a screen door, one of them old-fashioned kind, with the spring on it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Where you open it up and it slams itself. Huh? And then mama hollers, don't you be slamming that door. I didn't put that door on there for you to slam. You slam it one more time, I'm going to give you something to slam it for. You ever had your mama tell you that? You ever had your mama grab you right there and twist and talk to you real low like, just keep it up. I dare you. I dare you to keep it up. I dare you. I dare you to scream out. Right in the middle of Kmart, mama would grab me right there. I dare you to move. I dare you to make a scene. I dare you. My mama twisted mine so far and so hard one time it was hanging down. I could, put, I could paint, uh, re, paint it red, white, and blue and sing uh, My Country Tis of Thee. Hallelujah, sweet land of liberty. Looked like a flag. Huh? Elizabeth and Zacharias had a screen door. And Mary walked up to it and banged. And, 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 and Elizabeth came to the door to see who it was. She was, wash, she was wash, wiping her hands off on her apron. And she came to the door to see who it was. And there stood Elizabeth. And, and Mary, Mary, Mary said this. Mary said, hey Elizabeth. And something the Bible says inside of Elizabeth. Woo! Just jumped up. Mary didn't run inside and grab her Bible and say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord, uh, amen. Uh, Mary didn't grab a bottle of oil and say, glory to God, amen. Uh, they didn't make out a check to TBN, uh, to Kenneth Copeland, or nobody else. All that happened was that the grace, uh, the love, and the anointing inside of Mary, when she spoke Elizabeth's name, something in Elizabeth came alive. Ah! Hallelujah! Something moved, and Elizabeth said, Hallelujah! Glory to God! Hallelujah! Amen. When Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth, not John the Baptist, but Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Woo! Glory! Listen, this morning I believe that God is knocking on somebody's door. Amen. Come on, you don't, need to, you don't need to have somebody slap you down. You don't need somebody to preach you happy. Come on, you don't need somebody to grease you up like a pig. What you need this morning is you need to answer the door. Amen. Uh, I said what you need this morning is you need to go find out why the knocking is happening at your heart. Uh, God, why are you waking me up uh, at 3 o'clock in the morning? God, why won't you let me sleep? Uh, God, what is happening? happening here I'm not comfortable I'm not happy what's going on and God is saying I still got something inside of you and I'm ready to resurrect it I'm ready to bring it to pass amen before Mary ever crossed the threshold Elizabeth felt something changing mm. amen it was the anointing inside of Mary think about it that baby Mary was carrying was so anointed that as her body pumped blood to that child, huh? that child's 
anointing began to leak out into Mary's bloodstream. Huh? And it came up into Mary's lungs. That anointing came up into Mary's lungs and attached it to itself to the air that Mary was breathing out. So that Mary did not have to touch her. All Mary had to do was say her name. And the air that flowed out of her lungs, across her vocal cords, through her mouth, when the air just brushed. Woo! It went through the screen door and brushed Elizabeth's cheeks. The air that touched Elizabeth's cheeks, the anointing that touched Elizabeth's cheeks was taken taken in by the capillaries in her cheeks uh, to rush down to her heart. Her heart then pumped it to her lungs. Uh, her lungs then pressed it, uh, oxygenated it, and sent it to her child. And her child came alive because of the anointing uh, that was... <laughs> Hello? Come on, somebody. I said, there's enough anointing inside a Holy Ghost believer. Huh? That you ain't got to go down through the middle of Targ J. Huh? Slapping people with your, with your family Bible. Amen? You ain't got to pull up at Wendy's. Amen? And begin to speak in tongues while you're trying to order your big bag. Huh? While you're trying to order your double cheeseburger amen and I need a and I need a frosty with that please amen I want to tell you something you don't have to go to work with your religious collar on amen but if you've been filled with the Holy Ghost the words that come out of your mouth carry enough anointing that you can set somebody free but in order for it to come out, you first got to get it in. That's right. That's right. And it ain't enough just to have it there and have it laying there. It's got to be active and it's got to be alive. Hello? I said it's got to be active and it's got to be alive. Mm. This, not, this morning there's a knock going out to somebody's heart this morning. God's knocking on somebody's door saying, What you thought was dead, I'm ready to speak life back into it. What you had given up on, I'm here to resurrect it. Hello? What you thought, what you thought was behind you, you, you were called, you were called at an early age to be a Sunday school teacher. You were called at an to be, a, to be a worker in the church you were called at an early age and you recognized it but life happened and you went through that divorce and you had that breakup and you, and you had that child out of wedlock and you got hooked on drugs uh, and you've been on meth uh, and you've gone through hell but I've come to tell you that what I spoke to you as a child is still there it just needs to be activated it just needs to be anointed if you'll allow Allowing me, I'm going to speak to you. And as I speak to you, you're going to feel something begin to leap inside you once again. Amen. There is life inside of you. There is life inside of you this morning. But you're going to have to answer the door. I have one. Cornbread Chris Hannah can hear, of course, representing Resonate the Sound of Resonate Church. The rule of city stretch the sound and the thank you for your support for watching us each and every week. Whether it's here, whether it's on syndication or YouTube or simulcast, or hey, whether you're joining us live right here at Resonate Church, thank you so much for your support. Now, for those of you who are saying that hey, you know, Cornbread, hey, Resonate Church, hey, we love what you guys are doing, man. We love that you that you're promoting Jesus and hey. We are, you know, we've been blessed by your ministry. You know, we've been blessed by your church. But hey, we want to turn around and bless you. How can we do that? Well, we got the answer. Go to our website, resonatechurchar.org. Go there, go to the top of the page, the top right-hand side of the page. Click on, on the word giving. Yes, it's a link. Click there. 
it'll take you to a brand new page. You have to work to get it. Click it, it'll take you to a brand new page. When you scroll down, you have four options. Those four options are, if you join this live right here at Resonate, at 414 County Road 4021, right off Highway 1 in Stadium, great. Best way to do it. Option number two, if you want to give online, click that tab link, and of course you're seeing it right here on your screen. Click that tab link, which is right there. And hey, if you have a whole lot of options that you can choose from. So if you want to give online, click the top link and make sure that you literally specify where you want your gift going towards. Option number three, your cell phone. Hey, you want to give, courtesy of your cell phone, guess what? Text the word give to the number that you see on your screen. It's, it's a little deal called text to give. Text the word give to the number that you see right there on your screen. Option number four, mail it. Hey, if you want to mail, if you want to mail your contributions to us, whether it's check or money order, hey, you can do that with the address on your screen. But let us stress this: if you do check or money order, please make them payable to Resonate Church. I'm gonna repeat that: if you are literally giving, courtesy of a check or money order, please make the check or money order payable to Resonate Church. And there are your four options, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want more info, hey, all you gotta do is go to ResonateChurchAR.org for all the details. Hey, Tyler, what up, man? Hey, cold friend, what's happening? Oh, man, no thing, but a barbecue wine. <laughs> hey! I have some sauce in my wing. Thanks to Resonate, though. Resonate is bumping every every Sunday, Wednesday. Hey, what about, hey, what about our whole entire church? You know, all we do is you know we praise God, we resonate Jesus. But hey, think about this: it's not just for everybody we meet; it's for everybody. Come join us. 10 a.m. Sunday morning. Come resonate. Sunday afternoon at five o'clock. Wednesday. Chapel on Wednesday, six thirty p.m. A solid foundation in the men's ministries of resonance. Cross the bridge with us with our women's ministry. Our kids' ministries, yes. All the kids can have fun. So can you. We can't wait to see you try this. 418 County Road 4021. That's right out Highway 1 the Stadium. And guess what? We'll see you there. Hey, and until we see you right here at Resonate, show love and give. Peace! Resonate with Jesus! Hey, ho. Wow. I was encouraged. I, I don't think I need to, I don't think I need to say any more than that. That was encouraging. No matter what you're facing, God already has it. You know, you know the best way to fight your battles? Have God inside. Work your faith out. In the middle of whatever you're going, keep in mind, this is where it all starts. And the Bible always says, renew you your mind, soul, and your body. He starts with the mind first, because that's what gets attacked first. That's the main deal when it comes to knowledge. Mind thing. But also realize, with that mindset, you have to realize that God's already taking third of knowledge. You, you got the victory. Please realize that you have the victory. Jesus, through God, through the Holy Ghost, through the Holy Spirit, you got the victory, no matter what you're going through, you got the victory. You know, I, I, I like what the Hawkins family used to say back in the day, don't wait until the battle is over, you can shout right now. So guess what, in the middle of your battle, 
start shouting. Start praising God. I don't care if you want to get your dance on. I don't care if you want to get your shout on. Start praising God right now because the battle's already taken care of. No matter what it is, the battle's already won. If I were you, I'd just start rejoicing. Danny Hall, thank you for stopping by and letting us know that God's already there. Appreciate the encouragement. I appreciate you at home for watching. God, thank you for letting us resonate your sound. Hey, we're back on Thursday nights. And we indeed pray you join us for our senior lead pastors, Brian and Carmen Adams, for our entire staff, for everyone here at Resonate. I'm Chris Honigan. We say, show love, give peace, resonate Jesus. We'll see you next Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a good night, everybody.